This is part one of a series about the very realistic possibility of life on other worlds of our solar system. To understand why scientists think that, we have to understand the conditions that made possible the evolution of life on Earth. Wherever those same chemical conditions exist elsewhere, life should too. In this video, we'll start with a little background to the subject, then we'll look at what the conditions are. Does life exist on the other worlds of our solar system? We don't know for sure. For now, the most truthful answer is very probably. In the next few years, we'll be sending out more robot explorers to other worlds to learn more. We may have the answers very soon. What would life in our solar system be like if we find it? It would be great if alien animals would run or swim past our cameras. Unfortunately, this is unlikely. The reason is that complex life, as on Earth, requires oxygen. The supporting and stiffening structures that allow the simplest life forms to become bigger and more organised can only exist in oxygen environments. Yet Earth's present oxygen wasn't there when the planet formed. Oxygen has been present in substantial quantities in our atmosphere for roughly half the duration of life on Earth, about 2 billion years. That's why life started to become more complex from that time. Most candidate places for life in our solar system have very little oxygen. Without it, life on those worlds would be similar to the life on Earth before oxygen. That means like bacteria, simple and microscopic. In fact, very simple life forms still make up the overwhelming bulk of life on Earth today. We don't notice them because they're too small to see. Yet that doesn't mean they're not interesting. Actually, their simplicity can make them a lot tougher than complex life. They're so tough that they thrive in places that not long ago we would have thought hostile for life. If living things can survive difficult conditions on Earth, they can on other worlds too. This greatly expands the range of places where we should look. Also, at least one other world might have enough oxygen to make complex life possible. That opens up many possibilities. Life needs three things. Water, a handful of key elements, and energy. It has to have all three. All life on Earth depends on liquid water. It's not enough for water to be present as ice. It must be liquid. Being liquid allows molecules to mix up and interact. In this sense, water is a solvent a liquid in which other chemicals can be dissolved. Water may be the best biological solvent. A lot of substances dissolve in it. Physical characteristics of the water molecule also allow for membranes and other aspects of complex biology. If life elsewhere is anything like Earth's, it will require liquid water too. So if we want to find life, the quickest way is to look for water. We used to believe that Earth was the only site in the solar system having it, but now we know otherwise. If alien life is very different from life on Earth, it may require some other solvent. As we'll see, one candidate is liquid natural gas. That's a mixture of methane and ethane. We'll learn more about methane in part 5 of this series when we get to Titan. Methane and ethane are not as versatile as water but may still do the, almost the same job. In some ways, methane might be a better solvent than water. It doesn't break large molecules apart as water does. Life as we know it needs a certain set of chemical elements as well. Carbon is the most important. Most molecules that our cells use are built around carbon. Carbohydrates are made of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. Fats are too, but in a different way. Some proteins need those elements, plus nitrogen, while still other proteins need sulfur as well. Nucleic acids, self-copying molecules which encode information, require phosphorus. A further set of molecules containing 20 to 40 additional elements may or may not be essential to life, depending on which books one reads. In our solar system, heavier elements are more common in the inner solar system, the rocky planets. Yet even the outer planets and moons should still have enough for life. Life also needs energy. You might mix flour, eggs and milk, but without heat they'd never become a cake. 
In the same way, we could have all necessary chemical ingredients mixed in water, but without energy, they would do nothing for eternity. With energy, however, simple molecules become complex very quickly. Scientist Stanley Miller put the simple compounds believed to have made up the Earth's early atmosphere, water, methane, ammonia, and nitrogen, into a sealed jar. He added a spark of electricity, and within a few days, the container was coated with, a, with brown gunk, now called tholins. The tholin material turned out to be a paste of complex organic molecules, including amino acids, the building blocks of proteins. The Miller-Urey experiment showed that combining simple ingredients and energy easily creates organic molecules via non-living processes. Earth has many sources of energy. As examples, we might first think of solar, including ultraviolet, and electrical energy in the form of lightning. Yet none provided enough power for Earth's very inefficient early forms of life. Earth's main energy source for making complex molecules is something no one could have foreseen in 1952. It's hidden, but we'll get to that in the next episode. We know that the conditions that permit life on Earth, the liquid water, a handful of key elements and energy sources also exist elsewhere. That's why life could exist in those places too. If you'd like to keep going with this topic, click on the next video in the series that's about the Earth's early environment that made life possible. Thanks for watching.